Have you ever thought about how your child knows exactly how to push your button? And it drives you crazy because you feel bad, but then the next day your buttons are pushed all over again? Well, what if I told you that you have the power to stop these buttons from being pushed before they even happen? It's not easy, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do that. It's just one short video out of a series. It is the 13th out of 16. You're welcome to just watch this short video and get some ideas right away because I made them like that so us busy parents can watch and walk away with some tips and tricks. Or you can go back to video one, you can download the guidebook from kidsmoveandlearn.com, watch them all and make some significant changes, whatever way works for you. But right now in this video, let me get down to showing you how to avoid those buttons from being pushed. As I said, we're gonna reflect, while I share you some ideas, we're gonna reflect and think about how it works for you and your individual child. So make sure you have a piece of paper or write some notes in your phone because I wanna make this meaningful for you. It is not a one size fits all. Every child and every family is unique and these tips and tricks will help you. But as a busy parent, I pretty much know that we'll get distracted and forget what ideas we had. So it's helpful to just quickly write them down and you can look them up later then when you need to. As we think about our buttons that get pushed, what is one thing that drives you crazy? Is it the sound of a chalkboard? Is it someone chewing with their mouth open? How does it affect you when they're driving you crazy or when you know those buttons are being pushed? Do you notice that your body starts to get more tense or you become more distracted from something that you were working on into now noticing the sound or these movements. This is what I call button pushers. Doesn't mean that necessarily somebody is intentionally trying to push your button, but for somehow it's got your attention and it's taking your attention away from whatever it might be. And then you're focused on just that specific thing. One thing that used to drive me crazy when I used to drive along and somebody would tail me and it used to make me so nervous and affect my concentration. I would get angry and feel very distracted. And then one day I decided I needed to shift my thinking about it. So I had to make a conscious effort. I started picturing the person behind me having a really bad day. Whether it was true or not, I began an inner dialogue with this fictional story I created. I started saying things like, I know you must have something really important to do and you're in a rush. And my goal was to keep myself in a happy place and it worked. There's been many times when I've used the strategy with my son. Either I said a phrase out loud or I kept it internalized. For example, I've been known to count backwards from 10 in my head and do that jingle out loud sometimes even with friends. Reminding myself on certain things helps too. Like I remember when he was two and we were walking through an airport and he was having a meltdown. Everyone could hear him a mile away. I felt so distracted and stressed that my child was creating such a havoc in the airport. But instead I just kept repeating, I know you're tired and you're hungry. And so it made me stay focused on what his needs were instead of distracted and worried about what else was going around. So the same logic I've applied to myself when I'm hungry or when he wants my attention. Starting with this awareness was the first step to helping me shift my mindset. Cause you see, when you're aware of what's taking you away from the here and now, this present moment, it's a lot easier to shift. As explained in the other videos in the series is that there are three key components to guiding behavior, connection, presence, and skills. And so if your buttons are being pushed, then your mind is elsewhere and it is not present in this moment. So it's really important to recognize what are your buttons or what are the situations that take you away from being present. So like in that airport mode, right? I didn't want to take my mind away from my son's needs into thinking about how people are watching me or how fast I needed to get somewhere because no matter what I had to do, I needed to be calm in this moment right now. And it kept me present. Same thing that happens when I was driving the car. It kept me present in the moment so I could concentrate on what I was doing. So that is the first key step of helping your buttons not get pushed. So here are some examples of some hot buttons and daily habits. I want you to take your notepaper out and either pick some from this list or think about yourself. So what are some of your hot buttons or a daily habit of distraction? Because a habit of distraction can almost be like a hot button. So for example, your child wants your attention or wants to play or you need them to do something but you're thinking I need to do the dishes, 
Well, that's like a button for you, or it might be a button for you because you want to do dishes, but your child's taking your attention. You want to put the laundry away, but your child wants some help. So it's like the button for you is not necessarily your child pushing those buttons, but that distraction is the button. That distraction is calling your name and keeping you away from being present in that moment. So write down a couple that you can think of off the top of your head. And if you can't think of any, it's okay, you can come back to it. Keep that in mind because that's gonna be help you figure out how to intercept and change that reaction and those behaviors when you identify what they are. So now think about your child. You may not call them buttons, but what do you think takes them away from feeling content and being in the moment? What do you think those might be? Is it something like when maybe they're having lots of fun and you say it's time for cleanup or when you say it's time to go to bed? And now I get it that there are schedules and things that you want to do. I'm not suggesting that you want to let them roam free because children need these structures like time for bed, time for things like, you know, lunch and stuff. But there is a whole video about creating routines to help set up those behaviors so that you can keep those expectations and structures in place. But when you think about being present and in the moment, it's going to make a much easier transition. So plan ahead and think about these hot button warning signs for your children. Make a list of what those might be for you. Have you ever heard of the window reflection analogy? You know, when you look in a window, you can look through it about where you want to be but you can also see a reflection in the window. Think about this window reflection when you're ready to try to intercept those hot buttons. Are you ready to give directions? Or are you overly distracted or are your buttons being pushed? Is your child ready to receive directions? Or are they also overly distracted and or having buttons being pushed? Slow down the actions and make manageable chunks because if you can get their attention, before you give the directions, you're gonna be probably more successful. So back to this window reflection ideas. You know where you want to be beyond the window, but when you look in the reflection, you also have to think about where you and your child are, your present mode, and are you ready to move forward together? You have to pace them together moving forward. If you try to make one person go ahead of the other, that's where often conflict happens. And I'm not suggesting that you need to be holding their hands step by step the whole time to get them to follow directions. But what you do need to do is go through the steps to get them to being independent to following those directions. And this is why I recommend watching all of the videos, especially at the beginning where I talk about breaking down those expectations and how to get them to begin being independent with them. So right now, if you can get their attention before giving directions, how successful are you going to be? you're more likely going to at least start to move forward together. There are always ways where you can give them some nudge to keep moving forward so you can take care of a distraction or you can set up some systems in place so they can do things more independently so you can take care of a distraction. But begin that pace together because while you give your child those directions, you have to be mindful of your cool. So planning ahead is going to help and slow yourself down, be in that moment, focus on your child and where you want him or her to be. And in return, you're gonna find a way to keep your child focused on following your directions. Give yourself permission to set aside those responsibilities so you can stay focused even if it's just for a little while to get them started. Because as I explained in a previous video, you can plan out how to get their attention, but you can also need to plan right now for how to deflect those hot buttons and those distractions. A good way to deflect those hot buttons is to reframe your thinking as I gave in my driving example. Prepare for when a hot button is going to get pushed and how you can shift back to the present. Think about ways to get that attention before the buttons are pushed. The goal is to get that heated environment into a calm, relaxing, fun, present state. Because let's face it, no matter how much we try, that button's gonna get pushed sometimes and we're gonna be shaking our head and saying, oh, oops, too late, the button's pushed, now what do I do? So here's some practical examples for you to think about how to deflect those hot buttons. The child hears it's cleanup time and they toss a toy. So now in this case, your child's buttons are pushed, but probably yours too because they threw a toy. So instead of thinking, oh, this child's angry and you need to address that they're throwing toys, 
Because yes, you can teach that frustration of expression of throwing toys is not acceptable, but that's not available for your child right now when they're in the moment of feeling angry. That's something you do at another time when you're going to teach the skill because they're not really present right now. Remember, you, they're not going to learn a lesson. So instead, try this. Reframe your inner dialogue. Child wants to play longer. I didn't give them enough warning. So here's a tip. Try sitting down with them and do an attention grabbing activity. Do something like sing with a toy or something silly with a toy. And then when that child gets reconnected with you and is back in that positive moment with you, then you can give them the five minute warning. Or maybe at this point, it's a three minute warning. And then at cleanup time, you can be present with them and then do another attention silly activity with them. Like maybe, hey, I'm gonna count how many things I can fit in my hands all at once. Or I'm gonna make these animals make noises while I put them away because if you do that, you keep them present with you. You're deflecting those buttons from your child about not wanting to clean up. You're deflecting the buttons on yourself where your child's saying no or throwing. And instead, you're both being present. You're making this activity joyful and happy and completed. Because think about it this way. If you wanted to follow down the path of these angry buttons that are being pushed, your cleanup routine is probably not going to look the way you expected it. Most likely, it's going to be 15 minutes or a half hour of more and more arguing or more and more negative. It's going to feel more like angry feelings that you're going to have resentment. Your child's going to feel resentful. And who's going to end up doing the cleanup? It's either going to stay a mess or you are, right? So why not just take two minutes out of your busy schedule? And I know it's hard to do that sometimes. But sit down on the floor with them and make it happen by being present with them. Don't forget though, that you want to teach that frustration skill to them. Because if you don't believe it's acceptable to be throwing toys, then you do wanna come back to that. But you wanna teach that skill when they're in a positive learning moment of time. So maybe like the next morning or that later that day when they're playing, then you can sit with them and start talking about how a positive reaction is when mommy says it's cleanup time. There is a whole other video on how to teach and when to teach a skill. So I encourage you to go watch that if you wanna learn more about how to do that. In this video, we recognize that there are hot buttons that take you or your child away from being present. And then when you reframe a negative thought, it can help you shift to a positive moment and stay connected. And if you have the guidebook, or notes, it really helps if you take some time to reflect on your hot buttons and other ways that take you or your child away from being present. Reframe those negative thoughts into positive thoughts and plan a strategy to help you stay present. Because if you wanna make a significant difference, it's not just about this video and the little tips and tricks here, but it's putting all the pieces together. Start from video one and watch all of the videos along with the guidebook at kidsmoveandlearn.com and then you can make a significant difference. If you found this helpful, or if you want to share it with someone, please don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Bye.